CTV News reports, members of parliament dove for cover and barricaded themselves behind tables and chairs as gunfire shattered the peace of their weekly routine caucus meetings Wednesday morning when a gunman stormed Parliament Hill. In interviews on social media, MPs painted a picture of the chaos that ensued when the gunman rushed into center block after fatally shooting a soldier standing guard at the nearby war memorial. Video from inside center block shows police officers and security personnel, guns drawn, making their way down the hall of honor before gunshots ring out, made even louder by the echo produced by the building, building's high ceilings. Security is on high alert. Soldiers who have earned the right to wear their uniforms cannot for fear of becoming a target. This affects not only the people immediately involved, it affects the whole world. Even our local sea cadets and other groups under the military are not allowed to wear their uniforms. Sea cadets this week was canceled all across Canada. Not allowed to go in public in uniform. I'm sure most of us that are here this morning have been glued to our news uh, TVs for the news updates on these tragic and terrifying attack on Ottawa this week. Many have asked what is happening to our world. Can the answer be any simpler? The world has left God out of the picture. Billy Graham's quote is simple like his sermons. To get nations back on their feet, we must get down on our knees. Last week I spoke on prayer. It is our communication with the Lord, the God of this nation. Praying to us should be as breathing, a necessity. Ephesians 3, if you want to follow along with me this morning. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 12 to 21. Says this. In him and through faith in him we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you, therefore, not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family, in heaven and on earth, derives its name. I pray that out of this, out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and how high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know his love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Psalm 62, 1 and 2 says, My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. 
I will never be shaken. Well, it's hard not to be shaken by the evil in this world. It is hard to keep our eyes focused on God when life's waters get rough. When the leaders of our country and soldiers in our homeland are attacked. This is certainly a time when those who do not profess to follow God Almighty, they call on Him. They pray for His protection. They pray for justice. What has happened to our world? People have become busy with their lives. They have crowded God out of their lives. Sunday was once a day to go to church. Now people pass, the pass going to church for the opportunity to go shopping or to go see a hockey game. People have their cake, but they want to eat it too. And it's easy to say, well, what's the point of having a piece of cake if you can't eat it? Be careful of that first thought. Those of us who fight against the cravings of sweets and other delicious foods, we know what happens if you take one bite. You take a second bite, and then a third. Enough is never enough. That is what happened to our world. The changes didn't happen overnight. One step at a time, bit by bit, that's how it happened. One day there were Atari games. Do you remember those? Of course, we all do here in this room. I remember as in my, probably my mid-teens, before we even got an Atari game, innocent race car games or Pac-Man. Today there are zombie and war games, teaching people how to kill and enjoy it. The number one TV show used to be The Cosby Show or Little House on the Prairie. Now it's Criminal Minds and CSI and other shows with detailed scripts of how to kill people and to torture them. Romans 12, 9 to 10 tells us love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. And Philippians 1, 9 to 11 says, And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more, in knowledge and in depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best, and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. Do we pray the prayer of Jabez? For God to enlarge our territory? For us to step outside of our comfort zone? I read yesterday on VOCM News of another brutal fight that has left one person in hospital with serious head injuries. And a young man, only 18 years old, arrested. From here, in our local areas. That reminded me of another heartbreaking scenario, much the same back in 2005. Someone so innocent and harmless as Richard Brace was murdered in Carpenter. He was my neighbor all of my life. What has happened to the world? Bodies of six babies found in a storage locker. A man attacking 
police officers with a hatchet. Guns in schools, children killing peers. All happened this week. There's only one answer. The devil is alive and well. And he's roaming. He's seeking whom he may devour. Have we come? Have we become complacent in our own lives that we fall into the trap of asking this question ourselves? What has happened to the world? When we know that as the day of Christ approaches, the world will get much worse. People will fall away from the church. Those we expect who are good and honest will disappoint us greatly. Pray. Pray with unceasing prayers. This is the only answer. Pray for the salvation of those who wander in darkness. Pray for our lights to shine for Jesus. Pray that our nation will realize the devastation of this world without God. Pray that people up and down this northern shore will accept God and turn from their wicked ways. Is this your desire this morning? Next Sunday morning at 9 a.m., we're having a prayer breakfast here with our guests. How many will be here? I challenge you to take every advantage of every opportunity to join in prayer through Bible study groups, through Sunday worship services, through prayer breakfasts. And if you know of anyone who requests prayer, add them to our prayer tree. I invite you this morning to come for a time of prayer. And if there's only one person who doesn't know Jesus this morning, if you don't have him as your personal friend and savior, then I invite you to accept him in your heart. To make a choice to stop doing the things you normally do and to follow him. Let's pray for our nation. And for those who govern our province. For those who lead us in the Salvation Army. Pray for our young people. Pray for our poor. Pray for the Ebola crisis. Pray for the military. And all who serve our country. For those who protect us. Those in authority. For those in our health care. We don't have to look very far to build a prayer list. And this morning I want us to sing something.